same kind of professional settings where you have control, aperture priority, shutter priority. Remember the 10 photographic principles you're shooting. Um, I'd hang out in aperture priority for now for all of them except for the motion shots. When you're trying to freeze or blur motion, I'd switch over to shutter priority. So look at it right now, see how dark it is? And as I spin this dial, it's getting brighter. And now it's too bright. So you always want it at zero, okay? And if you're in manual focus, you switch this over to manual, and now you're gonna be focusing here. All right. This camera's kind of cool in that when you're in manual focus, it's actually gonna to try to cheat for you. So even though, um, let's for instance, over here, say shutter speed over there, and we're a decent distance away from that, the second I go to touch focus, it immediately jumps in so that I can see the area that I wanna get in focus. So this is really great for your medium and your deep depth of field shots. And when I let go of it, it snaps back to the composition I wanted. So that's an added function inside that's helping you like ensure that your picture's in focus. Yeah, the entire course is project-based learning because everything that the students are producing is portfolio piece uh, or uh, their own films. Um, so our students are gonna move earlier in the year. They started with understanding uh, 10 uh, central photographic principles. They looked online uh, to find examples of ones that we covered in class in a, in a traditional lecture style format. That was very interactive for them to see imagery and examples of what successful photography looks like. Yeah, today's, today's project, uh, the photo scavenger hunt, they had uh, two class periods to investigate online and work with in teams and then get checked out by myself or any of my student assistant teachers to ensure that they understood the principles. And then they had three class periods to shoot their own. I guess we could. It would work for the soft lighting. That's true. Oh, we could do the hard lighting in the drama studio. There's all that light in there. That's true. We can have you slash me sitting on the chair. That would be really cool. Let's set it up. Yeah, we can set it up. And mm -hmm. just have it like right here so you can't see like any of this. Mm-hmm. Okay. That'd be good. You know, what project is this? Um, right now we're working on shooting pictures with different components of photography. So like different lighting, um, different focuses, things like that. So we have to have 10 pictures and each has to have a different photography component. Well, so the project is how long it's gonna be, you know, giving the you know, teacher give you your um, we started on Monday, and I think we're going to have until next week. And we have this class two times a week. Do you want to uh, do soft light or hard light first? We can do soft light first. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's hard light. Let's see. Yeah. Do you want to take a picture of me? I like to be the subject. All right, cool. Because I don't. Okay. But that doesn't mean... All of them have. Yeah. Like, if you took the shadows away. Where, where do you? Uh, hard lighting. Okay. No, we're good. That's extreme lighting. Where do you see the shadows? Like on my face. They're like coming from your face, but it's good. Mm -hmm. So. Go back to the. Huh. Still blurry. How's that? It's a shutter speed. Mm. Do you need to change it again? Yeah. Can we go to Mr. Herman? Because I just want to figure out where the shutter speed is. There he is. Oh, Mr. Herman. We're having um, trouble figuring out the shutter speed because um, it's really, really sensitive. Like all the pictures are blurry. And I can tell that when I take the shot, it goes super slowly. Right, so you're at like a, a super, super tiny opening for a deep depth of field. And if you remember on our cheat sheet, 
a small opening means a very long exposure. So right now, you're at a half a second. <laughs> so it's definitely going to be blurry. Oh, I was thinking right? the opposite. I was so, unfortunately, sometimes when you look at resources online, they, they, they switch them. They show the inverse relationship. I'm trying to show you that small opening, longer exposure. Big opening, faster exposure. So, for you to be at a deep depth of field scenario where you're trying to get motion blur, you're going to end up dealing with a very slow shutter speed. It makes sense like the traditional three light setup. Oh, yeah, what if you put the red light on this side? Oh. It like flickers on and off. I think Ti uh -oh. try tightening the bulb. But it's hot. The, the bulb. Well, what are you trying to do? We were uh, trying to get soft lighting. soft lighting, which is why we like, but we don't have like the three light setup. Mm -hmm. So we can't like eliminate the shadow from behind, which is our nice. problem because we're trying to get it soft, which is no shadow. Right. So you can move your subject away from the surface mm -hmm. and that should take away the shadow. Um, add another light or use the reflector to try to get that light to bounce in and fill in those shadows, right? So it's, it's a combination, it's a little bit of the dance of positioning of the light, power of the light to the, sur to the subject, distance from the background, how far away is the camera, how close are you to the subject? I mean, you're gonna have to get some happy medium after you yeah. do some trial and error. Yeah. Actually, you know, let me know you want to use it when you want. There were some other lights that were like that that are on the floor. Yeah. Water. And our work actually transcends into the other coursework. So our students are able to present their learning and their subjects through visual media. And this is developing the skills so they can do that in their math class, in science, in history, in physical education. Uh, media literacy and media production is something that's very much ingrained in the culture of our school. They're fully engaged. Um, and we see that happening in all our classes. So it's not just because they get to play with the camera and they get to have fun in photography. You know, this was the case in history because they have a buy-in point. They get an opportunity to um, really have a say in what's going on in the back end of the project. And they get to make a decision about how they're going to present their learning. And that revolutionizes everything. Mm -hmm.